Okay, let's talk about the OGT, and specifically that stands for the Ohio Graduation Test. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're a high school student in the state of Ohio, and you are obviously preparing to finish up high school and uh, take the OGT uh, test. So what we're going to be talking about in this video is a math practice problem that uh, hopefully you'll be able to conquer uh, fairly easily, but it's the kind of level of math uh, that you, for sure you're going to be expected to have uh, known. So we're going to cover that problem in a second. But before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been uh, teaching many, many years, and over those years I've constructed uh, several online math courses. I actually have a OGT uh, math prep course, extremely comprehensive. I'm going to leave the link to that in uh, the description of this video. But with that being said, let's go on to our problem here. So let me let me tell you what I have. Okay, so this is obviously some sort of shape. It's in fact a rectangle, and I have some uh, lengths here, right? So I well, actually this is the this is the dimensions of this particular uh, uh, rectangle. Okay, so we have the length, and we have the width. And we also have that its perimeter is 40 centimeters, okay? So its perimeter is 40 centimeters. And what I'd like you to do is to go ahead and have you solve for x, okay? I want to know what x is. So go ahead and solve for x. Now, if you think you know how to do this problem, I would go ahead and pause the video and try it real quick. If you need a hint, I'm going to give that to you here in a second, but if you don't want to hear that hint, <laughs> and I would suggest that don't listen to the hint if you think you know how to do the problem, but if you think you need a little bit more information uh, before I actually solve the problem, then pause the video. Okay, so here comes the hint. All right, so first of all, we have to know what the perimeter stands for, right? So the perimeter is basically the total, sum total of the distance or length around a figure. Okay, so in this case, let me do this again, we would need to add up this length and this length and then this length and then this length right here. That is the perimeter. Okay, when I add all those um, dimensions up, I'm going to get the total perimeter of this particular rectangle. So it's given to me as 40 centimeters. So obviously the lengths here, the length and width are going to be in centimeters. So that is your clue. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve the problem. All right, so hopefully this wasn't too difficult. Uh, it's actually a pretty basic problem. Definitely something that you're going to, um, you know, would be expected to know this level of math to be, um, you know, to graduate high school, okay? Because, you know, through high school, you've taken at least a full year of algebra and some geometry, okay? So let's go ahead and get to this now. So again, the perimeter is the sum total around this rectangle. So I need to add up this and this, okay? So I'm halfway around the rectangle. So that's going to be x plus 2x plus 1. So that gives me halfway around the rectangle. But now I have to uh, get this length. So what is this length? So if what you need to know is in a rectangle that the opposite sides are congruent. In other words, they're, they're the same length. So this would also be x. And then down here, this side here would, would also be 2x plus 1. Okay, so actually let me scoot this down so we don't confuse anything. Okay, so, so we have to now add up all four sides. So we have x, 2x plus 1. Let's add another x. And now let's add in that final length here of 2x plus 1. And by definition, the sum total of all four of these um, sides is going to be the perimeter. Okay, and, and that was given to us as 40 centimeters. We'll just go ahead and put in 40 right now. And then uh, what we have here is a nice algebraic equation. Okay, so at this point, if you're able to set this up, that's good, okay? If you were confused about that, but now you're like, oh, okay, I get it, I would suggest pausing the video and seeing if you can solve this equation, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and solve the equation now. So we have a bunch of x's and two x's and one, so the, the uh, uh, thing we need to do is add like terms. So we have an x, 
I have 2x and x and another 2x. So 2x and 2x, it gives me 4x, and then I have another x and x. So in total, I'm going to have 6x. We'll write that right here. And then we have numbers, okay? And numbers themselves are basically like terms. So we have 1 and 1, so we can add those up. That would be 2, and that would be equal to 40. Okay, so hopefully, you know, uh, this is all making sense to you. And now to solve this um, equation, all we need to do is subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Now we have 6x is equal to 38. And then I can simply go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 6. And I get x is equal to 30. I'll write that a little bit better. 38 over 6. Okay, now, of course, a couple things you could do here. It all depends on... Uh, how, your, um, how you see your answer choices or how you have to enter your answer. But when it comes to fractions like this, okay, you want to definitely uh, reduce them. I'm not going to simplify this right now. You can do that. You want to, you want to be able to reduce this or turn this to, into a mixed number, uh, mixed fraction, or a decimal. Okay? So it's really up to, up to you there. Now, knowing that, this uh, value is the sides would be the... Um, the length of, it would be the width, okay? All right? So that's the x. Now, if I wanted to find this side, I would have to take 2 times this value and then add 1 to it. So you've got to be very careful. Remember, with these um, math problems, you have to be very careful on what the question is asking, okay? Sometimes uh, students will solve for x, but that's not the question. They might be asking for this length here, which means you have to do a few other additional steps, but they get so caught up in solving for a variable that they forget to do something with it. So anyways, um, if you got this right, uh, excellent, okay? If you needed a, a little bit of help, no problem. If you're totally lost, well, use this as feedback, okay? That's the whole idea of this video. So let's go ahead and wrap up um, this little, basically just like a pop quiz, just to help you kind of gauge where you, you might be. So what I always like to tell uh, those of you who watch my videos like this is, one, always take full advantage of what your teacher is saying, okay? You're, we'll use your school, your teacher to the fullest, okay, in terms of preparation for these exams, okay? Um, it's a critical exam, and you need to do well on it, all right? So you got to put a lot of effort into it. So ask your teacher, get, you know, use full, all the full resources of your school. Now, if you need something beyond that, a course like my uh, OGT math prep course is excellent. Why? Because, well, you know, I am a math teacher for many, many years. All my courses are super high quality, very comprehensive. Uh, so I think you'll be impressed. But again, I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been uh, on YouTube for a good 12 years. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos right now that can help you out uh, for the OGT math section. Um, so if you want to check you know, check out my videos on my channel, I would encourage you to do so. And hopefully you subscribe because I'm posting stuff all the time that can help you out. If you liked the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. What's your um, plans after high school? Are you, are you considering going to college? Maybe you're going into the military. Maybe you're going to a trade school. All those are good options, okay? So whatever your plans are, okay, if it's something that you want to do in life and you're motivated and passionate about it, it's a good path. There's not any one way to be successful. So, you know, I'm kind of deviating a little bit, but you don't have to go to college to be happy and successful in life, okay? Uh, you know, there's other paths, but the one thing that all these paths do require is commitment, okay, and hard work. And, you know, for you to be ready for your future, you know, as you develop a work ethic, learning how to learn, learning how to study, learning how to develop skills, all this is what you're really practicing when you're studying for a test like the OGT. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the OGT math section and all your future endeavors. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.